Okay, so if you were watching the Super Bowl, you would know that the first trailer for the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, has released, and the internet has many opinions. So let us add our own opinions to that by watching it together, shall we? Three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay. Oh shit, is that Numenor? That looks no. good. Numenor? What the fuck is that? They have antlers? He's stolen from the moose. Is that a hobbit? What? <laughs> but, okay. Is this, this is this totally getting copyright claim. Who is that? Okay. Castaway, elf. Before the ring. Is this gonna make me care before the ring? <laughs> okay, we got Interesting Frost. Interesting creature. <laughs> Who? What? What? <laughs> oh, battles! I did. Okay. <laughs> the ring. <laughs> Not. Um. Oh, that was a teaser. My bad. I thought it, it was a trailer. Yeah, that no. was okay. <laughs> that what? <laughs> I can't take anything from this. Uh, kind of. What else we got? Cheap, kind of. Well, there's no. Yeah, no some of it looked good, yeah, and some I would of it say looked the bad. Settings look good. I did notice that they are kind of changing around, um, you know, the races and the colors of people. Is that because of the whole, uh, you know, diversity amongst uh, content? I mean, oh my God, this is gonna. I already, I can already tell what's gonna happen on the internet. And, you know, all you have to do is, is click here. And then you, this is a joke. Evil cannot Why, create fan strike back. Uh, oh, my God. It's uh, 27K. Yeah, and through the magical power of the Internet, I am able to show you, only for a limited time, the actual dislikes. <laughs> I think the logarithm is still working a little bit uh, with this browser extension. That is not good. Now, do you think that many uh, downvotes are purely from people, you know, the race swapping, uh, the, the uh, wokeification as certain very sensitive people on the Internet are about to that kind of stuff? And um, yeah, I, at, at the risk of sounding yeah, like yeah. those people, I, this is, I don't know how to handle this <laughs> because Tolkien stuff to me is – sacred it is fucking amazing it is some of the best content that you can get out there as far as fantasy goes and what i am hoping is that amazon uh takes this license i mean they've freaking bought the estate you know of of this to be able to do the second age um and I just want them to do it with respect. I want them to adapt it, you know, faithfully. And I don't really want, you know, fucking Trump and fucking, you know, a bunch of references to real world politics in my fucking elf evil lord orc politics you know what i mean i'm i'm not into that and and we've seen how off the rails it can get with star wars right uh admiral gender studies yelling at at, at poe the whole film even when she's fucking it up um because this stuff is is it's like really cool numenor is uh the fall of numenor is fucking awesome guys this is stuff that um that i started to learn about <laughs> incidentally enough from heavy metal because there's a band Numenorian which I really like I would recommend songs horizon and alone or at a door and alone I love Numenorian and when I asked my girlfriend who is turning me on to all these really good heavy metal bands I was like that sounds familiar what is that from this is like, that's from Lord of the Rings. I'm like, what? And so I had to go. I had to search it up. And this was way before this Lord of the Rings shit. This is like fucking years ago, right? And I was watching all of these videos, Lord of the Rings, Complete History of Numenor. Uh, I, I've watched this one all the way through. And I've watched, and I know it doesn't say it, but it was, must have been on her account. But you need to go and watch the history of Numenor, Tolkien Explained, because I just watched this video actually just recently. And if they do any of this shit, Numenor in this series, 
it is going to be fucking awesome. Like the fall of Numenor, how Sauron. Uh, if you don't know, the Numenorians are like the most fucking badass humans. They're imagine them as like a, a, an island of of fucking Me. master chiefs kind of thing. <laughs> they are the shining example of humans, but they are also the shining example of what can happen when you pervert humanity. Let me just say, you know, you haven't heard of Numenorians for a reason, okay? I don't want to spoil anything for you. Go watch some of these lore videos. And so that trailer that we have here, literally I have no idea anything from it. And for it to get that kind of reaction, it has to be from something else, yeah. I think. No, and I think it's, it's from be. the Vanity Fair article. So yeah. we'll look at that in, in one second, or we'll look at it right now. And I know Alex is very into Tolkien stuff. He has a fucking better memory than me, so he can tell you all the names and shit, and I can't. But um, what do we want to do? Do we want to look through this individually, or do we want to We can go through it real quick. Yeah. I, like, I honestly was looking at it, and there's not a whole lot of definitive okay, stuff let's, here. Okay, let's look at it real quickly. Okay? Yeah, and this isn't so, pretty short. So here is, and I had to gather this from other sources. Um, hang on. Okay, there we go. So this is Numenor, apparently. Now, in, in a bunch of media, uh, it's depicted in different ways, but I'm thinking that this is the leader. If you don't know, um, the and I'm, I'm pretty bad at it, um, El, Elrond has a brother who is El... Uh, it's something else. It's like El... Mm. It's not Elrond, but it's like it's, it sounds like Elrond, but it's something else. And he's a human. It's his human brother. So you have to really get into the lore, the Uyu and the Valar, uh, who then, you know, as the world was being birthed, like you can kind of choose whether you want to go over and be like a human. So he chose to be a mortal while his brother chose to be like immortal with an elf. And so he's the kind of the person that's leading the, um, the Numenorians. And then Sauron becomes Sauron is powerful. Everybody knows this. He's a fucking badass, right? But even Sauron is scary of the Numa is scared of the Numenorians because they're the uh, Numenoria and their warriors because they have battles and they they banish Sauron and they fought several times and stuff. And he found a really clever way to sort of trick the Numenorians. And I'm hoping that uh, that is what this focuses on. But so that's what we see here. So that has me excited. This stuff reminds you of when they taken the rings, right? You're yeah. traveling across the land. The land is so vast and you're so small. But then why the fuck would you wear huge moon or moose antlers? Like, why? It, it serves you no purpose. you going to fuck with someone with a giant set of moose antlers? Yes, because they're weighed down and I can yeah. fuck them up. They're not weapons. I guess you they have You your head and you charge someone. No, oh, fuck oh, that. Oh. I don't <laughs> I guess they are to ward away evil. Sphere. They better explain it know. because it looks stupid. Um, and, you know, it looks like a CGI effect. Now, granted, in the Vanity Fair article, you see it again, and it looks like um, practical effects. Now we're getting to what looks like a hobbit. Here I gathered more information. This is a new character that they're making up completely, I believe, uh, that is a... A half root or something. It, it is a an ancient precursor to the hobbits. Mm -hmm. So this is going to kind of be a new thing because it specifically stated that the hobbits are, are nobodies and they've done nothing of note in the second age. And so yet everybody is thinking, Masma, oh, Lord of the Rings, there's got to be hobbits. <laughs> and nope. Amazon buys into that shit and says, okay, yeah, you're right. There does have to be hobbits. <laughs> so they inject the precursors <laughs> to the hobbits into the story. That's, that's gonna. So now I understand why, okay, we're starting to see some some downvotes. These downvotes may be coming from the, the lore purists and the, the, the sanctity of the, of the lore, right? Okay, because we're including hobbits. Now we move on. What do we get next? Before the King. Waterfall. Uh, Excellent. Waterfall. Cool. You know, this uh, is uh, Galen. Uh, what's uh, Galandor? Uh, gosh, I don't remember all these fucking names. I got to pull like... this stuff up. Um, you know, the power. Galen uh, Drail. Yeah. Galen Drail uh, from the. Because, uh, gosh, if you're trying to follow lore. 
There's so many There's fucking so names. There's so many names. Um, you all, you all remember her. She's really fucking powerful. And so this is the younger version of this particular character. Uh, why is she so powerful? Well, she's said to have the blood of all three of the elf kings and lines. Because remember, there was three elf kings and three rings. So in this series, apparently, this is all. This is her having this feeling like there's something wrong or there's something bad about to happen because it's crazy because you know amazon got the second age and if you know anything about uh tolkien lore the second age is like prosperous mm -hmm. like there's an, i mean it's well it's, there are some fighting but it hopefully we'll see all the decadence and we'll see the dwarves at their height because by the time you see the dwarves in lord of the rings they're they're They've already been destroyed pretty much. So hopefully there's plenty of that. And how are you going to do that? I guess through CGI, right? So I'm concerned about the practical effects versus the CGI. Um, any, 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 anything from you on Gandriel? Galadriel? No. Gal Galadriel? Yeah, I don't have any issues with, with any of this so far. I mean, like most of the things that I have issues with, we'll talk about when we get in, to the in, Vanity in Fair. Vanity artist, Fair. Okay. Where it's the first look at things. My, look, we've got two fairly inexperienced writers who really don't have any head writing credits of their own. The only reason they got this job is because J.J. Abrams told Amazon to hire them. And J.J. Abrams has had some successes, but he's also fucked some shit up that uh, I will never forgive him I for. I found the name. It's Elrond and Elros. I should have. I should have. It's very easy. <laughs> Elros. But then everybody has a brother of a brother and a son of a son. I guess which, confused. He let begat me get him who begat him. And, and let uh, me get to that because this is major. The one thing that I think is pissing off fans and, and the one thing that I actually might have to agree with Amazon on is condensing this story of a thousand years because it's like you, you have human characters and then humans are – they're, they're, they're not immortal. They die. And so every season you would have new human characters and they would die in a blink of an eye for thousands of years, right? It's hard to keep that story going along. And so they said that they had to condense it, right? And, and, and so that's a decision that I think you have to do. Um, here's a new character. This is a human character. Uh, the human character of... He's on a boat. Hal Brand. This is Charlie Vickers, Hal Brand. Um, it's said that he's running from a past and he has a secret. He killed a man. I already, I, I think I can already predict his secret. It's going to have something to do with Sauron, right? Because you have to, and then he runs into, uh, how do you say her name? Galandriel? Galadriel. 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 And they, they're on this wrecked ship together. So if you tie Galandriel to this guy who doesn't know or you know what's going on or is hiding a secret it has to be having to do with something with sauron and the coming darkness right and then we have an elf here who is capturing uh, catching an arrow kind of showing us off some some moves um like a legolas i think all elves are badass and have moves like this but then i think a lot of people are commenting on his skin color yeah, because exactly. elves are are fair skinned and there's no dark skinned elves at least not in the tolkien lore that i know of i haven't read all the books so again they're saying well they want to see diversity on the screen uh because it has to reflect our real world instead of reflecting the tolkien lore i'm not sure so that's what a lot of People are going crazy on, and then some people are calling others racists for you can't have daring to question whether the, the race swaps and diversity is a good thing or a bad thing. It's very messy. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's impossible, and it's really difficult because it, it, it to some people, I mean, I understand the argument because there is places within the Lord of the Rings universe where there are people of color. And I don't mean token people, uh, people of color. I mean diverse cultures that are not evil just because they're from certain areas. And so Amazon chooses to just go, oh, we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to change things up. And elves don't always have long hair. We're going to do all these other things. It's like, look, if they can figure out a way to make sense. I'm not judging until I watch the show. But I promise you, if I watch the show and they don't, address it some way or make it say like look there's they're there's, not going to address it there's and, no way and then then there's i'm no going to have issues with have it and I, I think what it is is I, I i normally don't care if if shows are diverse because it's like i get it when i when i'm a video game player and i make video game characters i might as well just go into it now I want to create somebody that looks like me or maybe an ideal version of what I look like with big fucking muscles and stuff like that. But um, 
And so I understand other people in life wanting to have that vehicle themselves in their show, someone that looks like them. So to me, it doesn't bother me so much when you're creating new lore, when you're creating something new and you're moving forward with it. But when it's based on something that already has established lore and you're changing things around uh, purely to reflect uh, a modern era or modern days, it calls into question the integrity of the material. If you're willing to change that, to satisfy a particular political or social agenda, what else is going to change in the material? And since this is based off the appendixes, uh, you know, like the ends of a book and maybe it's parts of another book, a lot of this is going to be original content. So I think that that is making people nervous that if you're willing to change this and, and, and do this, that, that now you're going to put in current political stuff like Trumpism and all this other shit and, and try to say Trumpism is bad in the middle of a God. Like, are we going to have like, I understand it's important to, you know, you know, show diversity, but. Are they going to put in white orcs and, and, and make orcs good in the universe? But it's like this is Tolkien. The, the orcs are bad guys. They're, they're, they're literally the personification of evil. They're born from evil. It, I mean, is that it's, it's going to create things or it leaves the door open to messing with stuff and that upsets certain fans. Mm -hmm. Now, are racists fucking racist and they're always going to be <laughs> racist? Yes. And are they going to speak up and say, this is fucking stupid, this is fucking ridiculous, and maybe hide under the guise of woke? Yes, there is a small segment of that. But don't categorize everybody as that because there are legitimate people that are like, hey, I'm just looking for the lore and I would like for it to be lore accurate and I don't really want current politics in, 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 in my you know show based on books that have established lore because I'm on the side of the fucking lore, man. I'm like, serious, you need... it's The story is so fucking cool if you go and look at um, those lore videos that I was showing you earlier uh, about the fall of Numenoria and this is supposed to cover that. This is supposed to cover the creation of the rings and the fall of Numenoria and, and uh, Numoria and and so it's gonna be fucking awesome I hope right <laughs> so anyway that's what Keyword, I'm saying about hopefully. that particular great thing job. great job <laughs> <laughs> uh, on on the CGI uh, it kind of looks like the, this this looks like the troll from you know there was opening the gates uh, of Mordor so it looks about on par with that and it should because they have a billion dollars OK, this is a billion dollar series, not counting the 250 million that they spent to acquire the license. So you're already up over a billion dollars. It has massive expectations. Yeah. Tens of thousands of people did not get bathroom breaks. So this show, TV show could happen. So, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah you, <laughs> the, you the gotta... Amazon. Amazon. And then there are parts where it looks cheap. Like this, the CGI does not look good here. I, of course, you can't really create an actual location like this in practical, yeah. but I don't know. In this spot, it looks cheapy to me. Hopefully, it, they'll continue to work on this. That CGI. looks good. Yes, it we doesn't got a look, dwarf. You know the. He's got a beard. You know this. <laughs> that doesn't look good. This one, I'm okay, and I'm. I know it's not going to be Hugo Weaving because this is Elrond. This is a younger version of Elrond, the architect, or something like that, and so he's going to factor in uh, to the story. Um, and I think this elf here actually has love tie a love story with uh, um, Galadriel. 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 I'm never going to fucking remember all these things. I have a, a problem with her particular Short name, hair. Galadriel. All right. Now here's where I think the biggest contention is. Where's the beard? This. You look at this, Joe. What character is this? No clue. Okay. Which of the races of the uh, Middle uh, Earth is this? I think you can put me on the spot because if I guess wrong, you'll be like, that's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got it. I was going to do it. Okay. I'm not going to do it to Joe. This racist. is supposed to be a dwarf. That's and right. if you know the like, token lore, it's it's like, but Alex, back me up on the lore of the dwarves. <laughs> yes. They're supposed to have beards. Sometimes, and the, the, we, they joke about it in the, 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 you know, the trilogy movies. You know, they talk about, you know, sometimes, you know, the, to the people who don't know, you see, you see a dwarf woman, and you're like, that's a dwarf man, and leading to the, the rumors that there are no dwarf women. And, you know, the, it's, it's funny. This is wrong, and this is this stupid. This is wrong. <laughs> and this is stupid, and whoever was in charge of this is dumb, and I hate you. Okay. But we have to. We'll, we'll we'll talk more about this in a bit. This is too charged to to continue. So okay. So obviously, here's the young um, Alex. Every time I Galadriel, Galadriel, Gal, yeah. Galadriel, 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 Galadriel. My fucking Galadriel. dyslexia triggers so hard. Gal Galadriel. Uh, the first thing he checks is that she's an elf, 
And these characters are going to be tied together. This human character and her. Is that a wiener? For definitely. I can't. It's I a loincloth. It's a loincloth. I think this kind of looks like the guy, only older. And this kind of looks like a hobbit based on the stature and the hair. Mm. So, again, uh, it's not the hobbits. It's a precursor of the hobbits. Then we've got the dwarves. Hopefully they do the dwarves justice. Um, not like they did in the hobbits. The men, the men look like they're doing justice. But can we really make actual, real female dwarves? Is that what you really want to see yes. a- on the Amazon thing? The answer to some people is yes. The answer to me is I don't know. I get, I get at least give her, at least give her a beard, okay? Because that there's okay. Whatever. She's got wisps, but not enough. All right. So then we've got I don't know. This guy's flying, and I'm not sure what's happening there. But here is this looks like Lord of the Rings right here. This looks like a new section of the battle, and it looks like they're battling orcs, I think. Mm-hmm. It looks like it. Oh, but those are the good orcs, by the way. These are the good orcs that love men and that uh, love elves, and they just want to get along. And it was ah. a misunderstanding, yeah, you see, very the whole time. Very sympathetic. Yeah, very sympathetic because they are marginalized. They should not be marginalized and treated uh, disrespectfully just for the way they look. And, and everything. <laughs> okay, anyways. Uh, and so, yeah, there's really not much to gather from that other than the the fact that the logo looks cheap and ridiculous. I don't know why the Lord of the Rings, the Ring of Power. Just, just show the Ring of Power. We know it's Lord of the Rings. Um, okay, so where I think most of most of these downvotes is actually coming from the uh, Vanity Fair article, which I'll show you now. There it is. Okay, it's on a different page. So here's the Vanity Fair article. Okay, um, some people are going to complain about female empowerment, but you know what? She is a fucking powerful character in the universe. I have no problem focusing on her. This is not mm-hmm. what I have problems with. Yep. Moving on. To me, she looks like a badass. You remember the moment in uh, uh, Lord of the Rings where no man shall ever I defeat no me? Man. I, thought, I thought that was a great part. And she looks like, and, and she wore man armor and everything, and she's wearing armor here. You know, it looks fine. It looks good. To me, I think it looks badass. Don't hate it. I don't hate it. And I buy her if she's going to be in some battles and shit. Moving on. Dwarf looks great. Yes. Here's where we start to have problems. No. This is like, this is not, I, there's never been a dwarf that looks like this before. So Four Alex beer. is going to say, are, are you going to, and same thing with the elf. Are we going to explain these things or are these things just going to be like, this is the reflection of, of the way things is now. So they and they actually address that in the Vanity Fair article and they do address people being racist towards it and the reaction of the internet. So look, this looks expensive. <laughs> yeah. This looks oh, fucking sure. legit. Like th- this is the scene that we saw from the trailer, okay? We have Elrond, obviously I'm willing to, that he looks nothing like the Elrond. We know he's a younger version. He lived thousands of years. His hair grows real slow or something. Oh, yeah. The short hair looks. Yeah. I don't know what's with the short hair. These are all decisions on modern day kind of shit. And then here we have a a romance, a forbidden love romance between that archer that we saw in the trailer and Bronwyn played. Okay, And uh, so it's, again, a forbidden relationship like we had between human and elf. Only this time it's between uh, a human female and an elf male. So we're going to get a repeat of that. And then here is Elrond with uh, Galandriel. Galandriel. Got it. I got it. Galandriel. Got it. And then here's <laughs> another one. See, the set, the set, this looks like a Hobbit set. Or yeah. it looks like a Lord of the Rings set. That yeah, but looks look fine. at her outfit, though. Like, the issue what, that I've What's got, wrong with her outfit here? It, it doesn't feel like it. If I don't know. I think your outfit's fine. Like, These outfits look those, good. Those ones look fine. Like, those ones feel like you're in Lord of the Rings. That feels like more... But she's human, right? She's poor. She's supposed to be. I don't fucking know. Is this a new character? Is this a book character? Uh... And then, okay, so here's where I'm saying. There's a, these are practical effects. Look at these moose wings or these antlers or whatever. That's practical. So hopefully they'll have an explanation that this, it scares off potential orcs or something, right? Because mm-hmm. that'll be fine. And then um, this is the new human character. So this is a character completely made up just for the show. So that's where I think a lot of fans are, are worried that uh, you're just going to like make stuff up and it's going to be like bad 
modern day mm. social and political commentary injected in the Tolkien lore when there is so much rich lore that you're already discarding and already ignoring in order to fit into a show. It's like that was more money, though. OK, first thing I want to bring up is who is in charge of this? OK, uh, f uh, just as Tolkien entrusted to Frodo and Samwise, two unlikely newcomers, McKay and Payne, high school friends from Northern Virginia who have been writing in Hollywood for 13 years. But the Rings of Power is their first credited IMDb listing. You just gave Jeez. more than a billion dollar franchise to two unknowns. But they've been writing in Hollywood together. Like in the location, not for Hollywood, just in Hollywood. We're passionate <laughs> about the material and, and, and had a take that matched Amazon's appetites and ambitions. See? So Amazon has an appetite and ambition, perhaps an agenda. And these guys are willing to do whatever it, to match that. Especially when they don't have credits to their own. Where it's like in Hollywood, in order to have your vision done the way you want, you have to have the pedigree. And you have to say, fuck off. This is what I've done. Otherwise, more than likely, you're going to be constantly compromising your ambition yeah. to keep your position. To make the studios happy. So that's a danger. Danger number one. They're unknowns that are happy to capitulate. All right? And does do they have the correct vision for it, right? All right. Well, and and they they just fluff it up. Why fifty hours? So this is five seasons. I'm assuming ten episodes each. So you're looking at fifty hours of television, right? And we felt like hobbits. We're two very small people in a big world and trusted with something that means so much to so many different people. We'll lo often look at each other and say, "I'm glad you're with me, Sam." Is like. I know I know I can't handle this, but you're here with me to help me feel like I can handle this, you know, kind of. So it's a little worrying there. Okay, so that's worry number one. Now, worry number two is they fired the Tol they fired a resident Tolkien scholar, a widely re respected academic named Tom Shipley. Uh, was uh, apparently on an unsanctioned German fan site interview saying on uh, what he thinks the show could and could not explore. He was fired for that. He's no longer involved with the series, and they the showrunners declined to say exactly what happened. Mm. But that, again, is touching towards he is dead set on protecting oh, Tolkien lore. Here's what I don't think they can cover. Here's what I think they can cover. And Amazon's like, get lost. Because we could cover whatever we want, and we have to cover whatever we want. Maybe he did violate an NDA. In that case, then, yeah, I can see that. But uh, he's not the only one to be fired. Lost a few other key players as well. Actors Will Poulter, Tom Bruges, a couple with de uh, departures of Shippy, and a production designer, and one of the executives who helped negotiate the Tolkien deal. And they kind of hand wave it away by saying, hey, you remember uh, Vigo Mortensen replier replaced Stuart Townsend, right? Uh, and then also they say on a long trip, executives and showrunners, uh, you know, it's inevitable that some people don't complete the journey. I don't know. Does that mean a, a little bit of a compromised vision? I don't know. And then finally, the third thing is uh, another concern. Is this series going to put hobbits in the second age? In short, yes and no. One of the very specific things the text says, hobbits never did anything historic or noteworthy before the third age. But really, does, does it feel like Middle Earth if you don't have hobbits or hobbits in it? That says one of the showrunners, right? Yes, hobbits don't have to be in it in order for, to yeah, feel like it. Mean, it you're mean. already you're already capitulating to what audience expectations <laughs> like, are, no. right? So now they put in a hobbit ancestors. That's what they're called, Harfoots, and they may not live in the Shire, but they're satisfyingly hobbit adjacent. So McKay and so Payne have constructed, hobbits. yeah, they're Tolkien hobbits essentially. Two lovable, curious. Uh, Harefoots, played by these two characters, encounter Lost Man on their premises, and it's their show's most entire, uh, enticing enigma. So, got to have a Hobbit, got to have a Frodo, got to have some of that. It's going to be this guy who doesn't know what, you know, he's an enigma, probably Sauron adjacent. Um, and then, uh, so that was actually the third thing, but then there's the full, fourth thing, which I'm trying to get at. Here we go, finally. When Amazon released photos of the multicultural cast, even without character names or plot details, the studio endured a reflexive attack from trolls, the anonymous kind. Obviously, there's going to be push and backlash, but the question is, from whom? 
Who are those people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? Even hardcore fans who regard Tolkien's work as a sacrosanct uh, will recognize the message of unity, his message of unity. Staying true to that is as important to realizing the vision of places and characters from this little-known era of fiction. Again, minimizing the fiction so that they can do what they want. Uh, eventually, we'll see the full glory of Khazad-dum, the cavernous necropolis carved into the Misty Mountains. Uh, let's see. And also, here's one thing that made me excited, is Celebrimbor. If y'all don't know him, he's from the video game. You remember, uh, he's the one that forged the actual rings of power i've got him here to refresh your memory Ta -da! you remember him from the video games mm -hmm. so are they going to take notes from that i'm excited to see him i'm excited to see this but he might just be like a little side character in it uh, and and but there's five seasons so who knows anyways continue along this uh line uh no, so they just kind of move on. They just say, who are the people that feel so threatened by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? Yeah, I mean, look, if you if you want to immediately call every single person who doesn't like your vision racist, I mean, if it makes you feel better, then great. But, I mean, that's one. it can also just thing. worry people because uh, it, the, the, there should not be a checklist and from every TV show that says we have to have this, this level of representation. And just having representation for that, like, is, is, is tokenization. And that's not what that's not what we want here. Uh, so you have Sophie Namvet, uh, who is a scene, who has a scene-stealing role as a dwarven princess named D Diza, and she's the first black woman to play a dwarf, uh, and she has n no beard, and you know it, it seems like it's being formed for that specific thing. Uh, it felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. Wait, that doesn't make sense. So then why doesn't it reflect the world of the token looks like? Oh, it's saying, okay, it's saying our, our world, right? It's felt only natural that an adaption of Tolkien's work would reflect what our world actually looks like. What? And did I get that right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, but that's not Tolkien's world is not our world, and it's not natural for that world to reflect our world because because too bad that's what, what they're going with. Where where <laughs> okay? Where are the white orcs that are nice to everybody? Where wh are you are you saying that you're dead. being racist against white orcs? This is ridiculous. I can't believe this is underrepresenting white orcs and good orcs. And fuck this series, and I am going to rally everybody to find... No, I want I, Mexican I orcs now. I, Tolkien is for everyone. <laughs> Tolkien is for everyone. His stories are about fictional races doing their best work when they leave isolation of their cultures and come together. So they say, because Tolkien is for everybody, then... We need the people who are in the story to look like everybody and so that everybody has a point of entry and people that f can feel fine. Fine. Whatever. Explain I mean, Explain it and I'll be fine. Explain it and I'll be fine. Obviously, there's going to be push and backlash. But for, for me, it comes from the lore. For me, it comes from doing the source material justice. But what they want to do is hand wave and call everybody racists. Uh, for downvoting the video uh, for various reasons and being concerned of the direction that they're taking it. Granted, this, what, 40-second clip, does it really merit going this crazy over? I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, well, we, I, I will judge the series when it comes out. But from that trailer, we really can't no. glean much. What we can glean is... Is there and from the Vanity Fair article is there are signs that they are willing to change the lore and change things for what Amazon wants for what the audience expects rather than what the vision of Tolkien is and all these various things and then reflecting our world instead of Tolkien's world so a lot of these things make fans concerned and I think that's why the video was downvoted more for this kind of stuff than for that. But kind I have of a stuff. question. What could go wrong when two novice writers decide to split off from the established literary work that people like? Let me show you a movie. Um, <laughs> let me show you a series, <laughs> series. Like, called <laughs> what, what, what Game called? of Thrones. Oh, I forgot oh, about no. that. Oh, I forgot oh, about Game that one. Oh, Completely oh, ruining Game of Thrones where I don't even want to watch it anymore. No. So I hope that this doesn't have a similar effect to, to that kind of stuff. It won't because it's a complete 
Lord of the Rings is complete, <laughs> and Hobbit is the complete, and and this is going to complete itself. Whether it's good or bad, they've already spent the money. It's going to get a full five seasons, going to get a full 50 hours, and we'll see what comes with it. And that's what they're saying. You know what? Uh, the, the, we think the work will eventually speak for itself. And say something when asked if fan concern and speculation ever unnerves him, before an orchestra starts, audience will talk to each other. But then as soon as the music begins, you're in and you're listening to that music. So they're saying, wait. Yes, we changed some of the characters' races around. We changed some of the sexes around. We're introducing new characters. And we have some stories and some things that we want to touch about the real world on there. But wait to see it before you judge it. Okay. All right, I, I, I'm, I'm on there. Maybe a billion dollars can make it look better than some of that teaser, and, and we'll get some good stuff. All I'm, I'm just incredibly worried, especially as a fan of Tolkien lore, uh, even though I can't get any of the names right. Please don't get mad at me for not getting any of the names right. Um, I am still excited for that stuff. Um, I mean, this, this has really cool stuff from the Second Age and the Third Age. And did you did you know, Joe, that the Earth was flat? I saw some videos on that. Yes. Yeah, the Earth was flat, and this reflects our real world. So the Earth was flat in the Second Age, but then after the Cataclysm, it becomes round in the Third Age. So I'm just letting you know that after the fall of Numenor. Okay. Anyways, guys, that is our opinions. We had to throw in a lot of extra stuff in there, and um, it's gonna be interesting for to a show this. Huge with this many expectations of a license, it's gonna be an event, man. Everybody is gonna watch it, and everybody is gonna have an opinion. And all the people that are saying, "Well, it's fucking woke," and or you know, it's it's racist and this and kind of, that kind of stuff, all of them are gonna watch it too. So Amazon's happy about yeah. that too, frankly. All right, well, we'll see how it turns out. I'm just hoping for a good story and something that does justice to Tolkien. And I really don't really want to see current politics and, and, and things in, in it. So we'll we'll have to see where it goes. All right, guys. So that's our very lengthy opinion. Holy shit, 37 minutes on one Oof. minute and a half trailer. That's about 40 seconds. <laughs> oh, but at least we covered it on the Angry Joe Show. We're not afraid yeah. to tackle controversial <laughs> topics. Those are our opinions. We shall have more when the show releases in September. September 2nd, Second. Mm -hmm. we will be doing Angry Reviews. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. We'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, Bye guys. guys.